Hi everyone, welcome to another computer science tutoring video from the Baylor University Tutoring Department. In this video, we will still be talking about functions, but specifically passing parameters to functions by reference and by value. Before we jump into what we mean with pass by reference and pass by value, let us quickly review variables in C++. Any variable that we initialize in code refers to a location in memory that contains one or more bytes of data. You may already know on some level that everything stored in a computer is made up of ones and zeros at its smallest level. Each of those ones and zeros is a bit, and eight bits are a byte. And again, all variables refer to one or more bytes in some location of the computer's memory. You will learn all of this in much more depth in later semesters, but this is just a short overview to help motivate our main topic. As mentioned in the slide, all locations in memory are directly identified by a memory address, which is just some whole number numeric value. In the example on the slide, I initialize integer x in C++ to the value of 20. If we were to then take a simplified view of memory after this initialization, we might find that x refers to memory location with address 5000 containing integer value 20. I have just arbitrarily chosen a memory address for this example as when initializing a variable, we don't actually have a hand in the picking of a memory location, as this is handled under, under the hood for us. Each byte in memory is directly identified by an address, and all integers are four bytes large. Therefore, this integer in the example takes up a location 5000, 5001, 5002, and 5003. Let's take a look at a short example of calling a function and what happens in memory when we do so with a parameter. In this case, we have a function example func that takes an integer parameter and adds 10 to it and then returns nothing. In main, we instantiate int x and set it to zero. In this case, let's say that x refers to memory location 8000, which now has the value zero in it due to our initialization. Next we call the function passing x. This is the key part. When we pass x to the function, the value in the x variable, that is zero, gets copied into a different memory location, let's say 9000, and is then given to the function we called. Once in the example function, the value at address 9000 is changed to 10, and then the function terminates, taking us back to main. In main, when we print x, as you might guess, the value 0 is outputted. What we just did is called passing by value. What this means at a high level is that we pass the value in, the, in a variable to a function as the argument, but did not pass the actual variable and the address it points to. Therefore, the function cannot change the original variable. In this case, int x had its value copied to another memory location, which was then passed to the function where that memory location 9000 had its value changed to 10, leaving x, which refers to memory location 8000, unchanged. Now, finally, let's take a look at passing parameters to functions by reference. When we pass a parameter to a function by reference in C++, we are essentially hand handing the address of the variable to the function. A copy of the variable being passed to the function is not made in this case. In C++ syntax, the only difference here is in the function header for example func. You will see that preceding the name of the parameter that is passed by reference, we include an ampersand. This indicates to the language that we want the actual reference to the variable that is being passed to be given to the function and potentially be changed. So let's walk through this. First, in main, we instantiate int x to zero. And again, we're just arbitrarily saying x refers to the integer at memory address 8000 for the sake of the example. Then we call example func and pass x to it. In this case, the variable named t in the function will actually also refer to location 8000 that x refers to. Therefore, when we add 10 to t, it adds 10 to the value at address 8000. When the function terminates, 
the value of x is printed, and we'll see that x is now 10. So why might we want to pass vari variables by reference to a function? Consider that we might have a large complex function that gets past many parameters. In this function, what if we want to change the value of a parameter so that it is also changed for the code that called the function? Passing parameters by reference allows an easy way to modify state in this case. Consider also a second reason, that being efficiency. Later, you will learn about custom classes and objects. Some objects might be very large, taking up many bytes of space. If we pass those objects around to functions by value, each time we do that, a copy of an object is made, which could use a lot of memory. If we pass the object by reference instead, no copies are made as we are passing the same reference to the object around to these functions. So that concludes our initial discussion of pass by reference and pass by value. In the next video, we'll do an example on a real program. I hope this helped your understanding of the topic and stay tuned for the future. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter which computer science course you're taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You'll find all the details you need about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu slash tutoring. You may schedule a free 30 minute one-on-one -on -one tutoring session online, or just drop in during any of our business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thanks.